this isn't necessarily a separate lesson, um, but what we're going to do for the next couple of days is look at word problems using our system techniques. So this lesson, this video, is designed to help set up the foundation for how to create your own um, equations when you're given a word problem. So let's look at the steps. The first thing is to define your variables. So we want to say what x and y are. You can use different letters, that's fine. Um, and then what you want to do next, after you say what the variables represent, is you want to find information that is common to build two equations. And if it helps, you can draw a picture. Then you're going to use one of the techniques that we've talked about to solve. I will tell you that we are mostly going to be using the substitution and elimination techniques in the word problems. We're not really going to be graphing them, but you could be. Some of the examples that we've seen, we've graphed. Um, and then you just want to make sure that you answer the question. So our answer is not a coordinate point. Our answer is a sentence. Let's look at an example. There are a total of 64 students in a drama club and a yearbook club. The drama club has 10 more students than the yearbook club. And then part A wants us to first write a system of equations that represent the situation. So we have two things going on. We've got a drama club and a yearbook club. So you can use X and Y, but I'm going to make it more relatable to the story. And I'm going to say that D is going to represent the number of students in drama. And I'll make Y the number of students in yearbook. So that way when I see the D and the Y, I'll know what they stand for without having to look back at the story. So it tells me that there are a total of 64 students. So the number of students in drama plus the number of students in yearbook is 64. So that's my first sentence. Now, the other thing that you need to remember is that once you use a number, you can't use it again. So when we write our next equation, we're not allowed to use the number 64. The drama club has 10 more members than the yearbook club. So since the drama club is larger, then we would say yearbook plus 10 is equal to the drama, because if we add 10 members to the yearbook club, it would equal the amount of students in the drama club. So I've just done part A. I've written a system of equations. Now we're going to go down to part B, and we're going to solve. So what you want to do is you want to look at your system, and you want to say, which techniques makes the most sense for me to solve? And I have a variable by itself, so that hints at me to use the substitution technique. So I'm going to rewrite the green equation, the first equation, but instead of D, I'm going to put Y plus 10. That was our substitution technique. So it's Y plus 10 plus Y equals 64, because Y plus 10 is representing the D. Now we just solve, and you get 2Y plus 10 equals 64. And so y is equal to 27. So there are 27 members in yearbook. I also need to figure out how many are in the drama club. So I pick whichever equation I want, whichever one looks easier, and I plug in 27. I'll just do 27 plus 10 equals D, so that's 37 members in drama. And you can double check yourself by making sure that that equals 64, 37 plus 27. And remember, our answer is not a coordinate point, our answer is a sentence. All right, we're going to look at one more example. You sell lemonade for $2 per cup and orange juice for $3 per cup. You sell a total of 100 cups for $240. So the 
first thing that we want to do, step one, was to define our variables. So I'll say that lemonade is L, so that's going to be the number of uh, cups of lemonade. And I'll make J be the number of cups of orange juice. If you're ever not sure what the variables are going to stand for, you look down at the question. It says, how many cups of lemonade did you sell? So that's how you know that the variable should stand for the number of cups. If you go up here, the question was, how many students are in the clubs? So you know that your variables are going to stand for the number of students in each club. So always go to the question if you're not sure what your variables should stand for. Now we need to write our two equations. So the easier one is going to be that we sell a total of 100 cups because the number of cups of lemonade plus the number of cups of orange juice is equal to 100. Now, I saved the 240. I didn't include the 240 in that equation, even though it was in that sentence, because I have other things about money that I want to involve it in that equation. And since you can only use a number once, I want to make sure that I use it in the one where I put all the money. So if it's $2 for a cup of lemonade, remember per was one of our slope words. So $2 is kind of representing the slope of the lemonade, right? Because each time I, I sell a cup, it costs $2. So it goes two, four, six, eight, right? For each number of cup. So my first part of the equation is going to be 2L because it's $2 per cup of lemonade. And then the other one is going to be 3J because it's $3 per cup of lemonade. I'm sorry, per cup of orange juice. Now I'm going to say that total represents $240. So since I can only use the $240 once, I saved it for the one involving the money. So I just did part A, which is write a system of equations. Now I look at my equations and this is set up in the form where I would want to use the elimination technique because the variables are lined up and I can easily multiply by something to make the coefficients cancel. So I'm just going to rewrite my equations down underneath L plus J equals 100 and 2L plus 3J is equal to 240. You could multiply the top equation by negative 2 or you can multiply the top equation by negative 3 depending on which variable you want to cancel. I usually like to pick the smaller number so I'm going to multiply by negative 2. So then I have negative 2L minus 2J equals negative 200. Now when I line it up with the other equation you can see that the L's will cancel when I go to add. So those cancel, and I just have J is equal to 40. So that means that I sold 40 cups of orange juice. Now we pick whichever equation is easier, and you can probably even do this mentally. I mean, if the total number of cups is 100, you don't have to write it out. You can just say that L is equal to 60. But the answer is not J equals 40, L equals 60. The answer is 40 cups of OJ and 60 cups of lemonade. We're going to spend a little while going over word problems, but this is the foundation of how to set them up. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.